this video we're going to be talking about Docker and why I like Docker and it help, how it helps me build software. Um, and the end result of this talk in this uh, series of videos will be us building some software sitting in or on Docker uh, on my local machine and then it should be drag and droppable in quotes onto Amazon AWS with minimal effort and without any environment differences. I don't want to have something working here, you know, my local machine fine, and then something working on the cloud or AWS differently. I want them to be the same with no effort and just a few command line to uh, command line requests to push it upstream to AWS. So the first thing we're going to do is something very simple. Um, without any configuration, we're just going to grab um, a tiny build of Linux or Linux off the web, which is the version we'll be using will be Alpine, which is actually around 35 megabytes. So it's tiny. If your machine doesn't have it, it will grab it off the internet within a second, a few seconds, depending on the, your connection speed, and have uh, it running. So we get started and we issue the command docker run minus it alpine, which is what I'm after, version 3.5, and execute command bin ash. And ash is synonymous with bash or an interactive shell. So the minus it is minus i is interactive and t is for the tag alpine. And you can see when I ls, I'm on a different file system for a different machine. You can see the uh, where, where I'm sitting, pwd, I'm on root, I'm on a different machine. Now if I run the same command with a different tag version, just alpine, which is going to give me the latest version of alpine. And if I run something again for alpine 3.4, it doesn't have it locally. You can see the first thing it does is it checks your local cache to see if it's got it already before it pulls it off, off the internet. And if it doesn't, it'll go and grab it. So you can see that was a pretty simple and a very quick way of get up and getting up and running with a, a piece of software, be it an operating system, uh, it could be a piece of software, a database, caching system, uh, web server, whatever. It's super quick to get running. So now let's take our example a bit further and um, we're going to create a Docker file which is going to take the initial image that we looked at and build upon it with a series of steps. So for this example, I'm going to be looking at a MySQL instance. I don't want to go and install things manually. I just like to use Docker to do it for me. So you can see looking at this Docker file, we have the initial from, which is the image, a bunch of environment setups, and we also have uh, like the username and password set up here. And this is all documented on hub.docker.com. And then finally, we expose a port with MySQL. So we say that I want to access MySQL for, through this. So the Docker file, if you've ever seen Puppet um, or, the, or the like, it, in my mind, it's just a recipe. You've got all the ingredients and you're just showing how to make it. So when you build a Docker file, you, when you take this, these ingredients in the Docker file, the Docker file is the recipe, you, you make it, you're creating an image. That's what it's called in Docker world. So an image is um, synonymous in software with a class. It's how, or it's a blueprint of how to do something. And in Docker world, you take the image and you make containers from it. So you'd have one image, but you could have 10 different containers. And each container will be effectively like a runtime instance of the image. And your containers could vary slightly between each of them. You might have, if you, in, in my example, if you've got MySQL running, you might have different data in each of the containers. In, in the world that we'll be looking at, we'll just be using one container uh, we can start and stop and pause and the like. So now let's action our uh, the building of our recipe or a Docker file. So we say Docker build 
minus t we can give it a tag so we can keep track of it so it gives us a meaningful name and then dot dot being in this folder i'm in the, i'm in the mysql folder where the docker file exists so i'm saying please build it in here and call it um, youtube mysql for this video so there's some uh, interesting stuff visible there you can see that there's a bunch of rows and uh, some of the rows it's found in the cache and basically for each row for each line in your docker file um, yeah, I'm going to simplify it by saying each line um, docker creates a new layer on the file system so the cool thing that docker has with this onion layer sort of file system is that if you have a million instances of docker running all of the commonality across all of the containers is shared unlike a virtual machine where everything is copied and pasted and distinct which makes it you know very uh, resource friendly i guess is the word so we look for docker images this will show us all our images and we can do a grep in that pipe grep for youtube we can find any images with the name youtube and there's there's ours so that works we have a we have a working image and the next thing for us to do is to go and create a container or an instance of the image um and within this world there's there's a few common there's a few commands that do sound the same i got confused at first there's run start create because they all sound the same to be honest um in this example i'm just using run um and run will do a it is basically a wrapper for create which will create a container and then start it straight away so when we do run our instance you can see mysql whirring up and processing and looking happy in the background so thumbs up it's doing its job okay you can see here when i try and stop the instance it's being a bit sad my control c is not taking any effect um, but as this is uh, a container or an instance we can programmatically talk to it and ask it to stop so if we do docker ps that's going to show the current running processes uh, with a unique container id number or hash um, if we do a stop on the instance you can see it stop and also what we can do is we can instead of running it in the foreground we can run it in the background with a minus d so when we do that that's going to create a, a, a daemon or whatever a background instance and uh, be running silent in the background and then we can connect to it so here i've just done a when, when, when you do a run minus d it, it dumps the, the the identifier of the instance and then we can say actually um ex execute or exec um interactive t it and the actual the id for the instance and then bin bash for it to connect to the linux running mysql and you can see this i'm in and i can talk to mysql i can connect the database using these credentials i've got my username my instance set as dev my username set is my password set is let me in so there we go i'm running my sql instance that's quite handy so in this video you've seen how to call and run uh, an instance of uh, alpine linux taken straight off the internet without any configuration and we've also done some configuration defined in a docker file uh, to build a custom mysql server a simple one at that and connect to it so i hope that was helpful for you uh, and perhaps piqued your interest into the useful technology and some of the things that it can do um, it definitely helps for sharing systems amongst developers and creating an exact copy with minimum storage you only define the only thing you're saving and distributing amongst the developers is a docker file or something along the lines of that 
a, a definition file and it builds itself exactly the same for each person in the development team. And in theory, upstream for a, a cloud computing system such as AWS. One of my goals is to build a, um, a development environment for my local machine with MySQL as the database because it's free and easy. And then upstream when it hits <coughs> AWS, it's going to swap out uh, MySQL with Amazon's Aurora database. So that's the end game. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and thanks.